Osama bin Laden, from a billionaire tycoon's son to America's most hunted. Beginnings, a glimpse beyond the gold. 1957, amidst Riyadh's shimmering landscapes in Saudi Arabia, a child named Osama entered the world, cradled by the opulence of the bin Laden family. This family wasn't just any ordinary clan, they were architects of modern-day Saudi, crafting majestic structures for the kingdom's royalty. But young Osama, even amidst such splendor, exhibited leanings towards simplicity. As he delved into economics and public administration at King Abdulaziz University, whispers arose. Did Osama really favor the words of fervent clerics over the lavish circles of Riyadh? Chatter intensified regarding his budding aversion to the West, possibly influenced by his engagement with radical thinkers. The Afghan chapter, Trading Comfort for Combat. 1979 marked a pivotal shift in the Cold War landscape as Soviet forces made their move on Afghanistan. To the global Muslim community, it felt like a direct challenge, an intrusion by a non-believing force into hallowed grounds. For Osama, it sounded like a clarion call. Forsaking the comforts of his affluent upbringing, he found solace in Afghanistan's challenging landscapes. He wasn't just a financier for the Mujahideen, but stood shoulder to shoulder with them in the battleground. Legends arose of his bravery, tales of his spearheading ambushes against Soviet troops. But this wasn't merely about combat, it was about connections. In the echoing chambers of Afghan hideouts, amidst passionate fighters, the foundation for Al-Qaeda was being laid. Al-Qaeda's emergence, a new horizon. As the Soviets withdrew from Afghanistan in 1988, a secret gathering of passionate thinkers, including Osama, convened, driven by a vision far-reaching beyond Afghanistan's borders. Al-Qaeda, meaning the foundation, was more than just another group with militant tendencies. It symbolized hope, aspiration, and for many, a commitment. Their foundational belief was straightforward yet audacious, unify the Islamic world under one caliphate, a vast Islamic dominion. This aim was entrenched in the conviction that Western entities, chiefly the US, whom Osama viewed as manipulators of the Muslim world, needed to be expelled from Islamic territories. So, how would Al-Qaeda make its mark known globally? 1993 provided the chilling answer. The city that never sleeps, New York, experienced a terror it had never known. A truck packed with explosives erupted in the World Trade Center's underground parking. While the iconic towers withstood the assault, the intent was clear. Al-Qaeda had boldly stepped onto the world stage, signaling its readiness to challenge the might of American influence. Rising tensions, the 90s and growing resentment. The audacious bombing in 1993 was just the beginning of a tumultuous decade marked by Osama's intensifying hostility towards the West. What could be at the heart of such disdain? Many speculate about his frustration with the presence of U.S. military bases in the sacred lands of Saudi Arabia. Additionally, the U.S.'s actions in the Middle East, especially sanctions on Iraq, further fueled this animosity. By the mid-90s, Osama's messages grew more direct and audacious. In a 1996 statement, he made a chilling call for Muslims to target Americans, be it soldier or civilian, wherever they might be. This was more than mere words. In 1998, the world watched in horror as simultaneous blasts devastated the U.S. embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam. These acts of terror took over 200 innocent lives and left countless injured, their lives forever changed by the tragedy. These weren't just random acts of violence, they were chilling showcases of Al-Qaeda's capabilities and intent. The global community took notice, with intelligence units racing to understand the enigmatic Osama and his expanding influence. As the 90s concluded, one thing was undeniable, under Osama's guidance, Al-Qaeda had emerged as a potent and unyielding player in the international arena. 9-11, the daytime froze. The man behind the mask, as the millennium turned its pages, Osama evolved into more than just a harbinger of terror. He was a man of compelling magnetism, drawing people from varied walks of life towards his vision. From riches to rebellion, he metamorphosed into an emblem of defiance against what many viewed as the West's dominance. Underneath Afghanistan's vast celestial canopy, stories spread. 
Some whispered of his almost mystical aura, narrating tales of him escaping assassination, miraculously unscathed when a missile reportedly hit his camp. While most of the world saw him through the lens of fear, pockets in the Islamic community viewed him as a symbol of hope, standing resiliently against immense odds. A hidden agenda, away from prying eyes, a daunting blueprint was in development. Al-Qaeda, under its leadership, aimed to deliver a staggering blow, one that would pause the pulse of the planet. Whispers suggest the mastermind behind this audacious plan was Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. When the plan found its way to Osama, it was embraced with enthusiasm and resources. The agenda? To seize commercial aircraft and repurpose them into airborne weapons, aiming at America's iconic structures. The fateful day, September 11, 2001. The day seemed to promise just another hum of urban life. But as the day unfolded, the world's rhythm was shaken. At 8.46 a.m., a plane tore into the World Trade Center's North Tower. Initial shock led many to deem it a heart-wrenching mishap. But when another aircraft struck the South Tower by 9.03 a.m., the grim realization set in. As live broadcasts captured the flaming edifices, the globe watched in horror. More news followed, at 9.37 a.m., the Pentagon became a target. And by 10.03 a.m., after passengers' valiant efforts, a fourth plane plummeted in Pennsylvania. Osama speaks, the tremors from the assaults echoed around the world. Osama's response? A series of recordings. His stance was firm, the strikes were retribution for America's actions in Islamic territories. What made these recordings more chilling was Osama's composure. Observers felt a cold detachment, witnessing a man who seemed to relish his perceived victory. It was as if he believed he'd not only accomplished a heinous act, but also delivered an unshakable message of power and audacity. A nation's resolve, while the wounds were fresh, America's spirit remained indomitable. With international solidarity, the nation responded with determination. A new chapter began, the War on Terror, which would eventually lead to the pivotal events of Abbottabad in 2011. The quest for Osama, tracking a mirage across deserts. A global pursuit, as the dust from the fallen Twin Towers began to clear, US troops embarked on a mission in Afghanistan, their eyes set on dismantling Al-Qaeda's power bases and capturing Osama. Yet, this mission felt like chasing a mirage. Whether navigating Afghanistan's rough landscapes or Pakistan's dense sissy mazes, Osama appeared to be perpetually one step out of reach. Whispers among the people gave rise to myriad tales. Some shared stories of Osama's knack for blending in with ordinary folks or seeking refuge in deep caverns untouched by modern advancements. Some even speculated he was under the protection of influential figures or governments, being strategically moved across the region. Clues, near misses, and deceptions, throughout the quest, US intelligence faced a barrage of potential leads. Fleeting glimpses of his whereabouts, mysterious intercepted communications, and even a video where he seemed to taunt his trackers. Time and again, just when they believed they were close to seizing him, he slipped through their fingers. One widely discussed episode was the encounter at Tora Bora in 2001. US forces were convinced they had trapped Osama in this mountain stronghold. Despite the relentless bombardment that followed, when the dust settled and the troops scoured the complex network of caves, all they encountered was silence and shadows. Was he ever there? Or had it all been a clever diversion? The final showdown, the Abbottabad raid, a secretive mission unveiled. On May 2, 2011, a single clue unlocks the mystery. The journey to Abbottabad started with a whisper, Okuwaiti. When the CIA caught wind of this elusive courier, they sensed he could be the missing link to Osama's hideout. For years, they meticulously followed his every move, using a combination of street-level intelligence and state-of-the-art satellite tracking. Their dedication steered them to an unusual residence in Abbottabad, a city famed for its military academy, and an unlikely spot for hiding someone of Osama's notoriety. This wasn't your average home. Its tall, formidable walls were crowned with barbed wire, and oddly, the residence seemed disconnected from the digital world, depending on couriers for messages, likely a strategic move to stay off the radar. Operation Neptune Spear, 
an edge of the seat undertaking, with a nod from President Obama, the covered operation was set in motion under the Shroud of Night. Tasked with this high-stakes mission was SEAL Team 6, a unit renowned for their exceptional prowess in combat. They flew in on specially designed Black Hawks, meant to glide silently, and remain undetected. However, the mission hit a snag. One helicopter unexpectedly crash-landed within the compound due to unforeseen complications. It was a tense, unpredictable moment. But these SEALs, ever prepared, adapted on the fly. Dividing their forces, they began a systematic search of the building, confronting sudden challenges and making on-the-spot judgments. Their pursuit peaked on the third floor, where they finally faced Osama. Moments later, after a quick exchange, the architect of 9-11 met his end. But there was no time to pause. The scene was quickly becoming a magnet for local attention. They swiftly boarded the functioning Black Hawk, carrying with them the body of their prime target, and left the crashed copter behind. A world holding its breath, as the first light of dawn broke, the SEALs safely landed at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. Back in Washington, D.C., President Obama and his advisors, who had been monitoring the situation live, finally allowed themselves a moment of respite. In no time, the globe would buzz with tales of this daring assault. The story would be retold through various mediums, immortalizing a mission that showcased the perfect blend of intelligence, skill, and daring audacity. Legacy echoes from the past. As the dust settled following his demise, a pressing question hung in the air, what comes next? In life, Osama had been a source of fear and terror for countless individuals, orchestrating horrifying events from the shadows. With his passing, there was a looming risk of him morphing from a mere man into an everlasting symbol, a beacon for extremist views. For many, his departure felt like a collective sigh of relief, a final page turned on the painful memories of 9-11. However, in the darker recesses of the world, some perceived his demise not as a conclusion but as a fresh start. For these individuals, he evolved into a symbol of martyrdom, a source of inspiration, and a foundation for tales of defiance. Though Osama bin Laden, the individual, had departed, the enduring myth and aura persisted. In our current global climate, nations don't just guard against acts of terror, but also the ideologies that fuel them. Many of these ideas were, directly or indirectly, magnified by Osama. Regardless of one's view of him as a malevolent force, or a misunderstood figure, his impact is inescapable serving as a stark reminder of the thin boundary between passion and radicalism.